Right, so we've just completed our final run in the very white, or should I say not so white, flight vectives from the North Face. I know we're a little bit late to the flight vective party, but the main reason being is I'm not fully convinced we need carbon plates in our trail running shoes. I tested and reviewed the TPU plated Vective Infinite, really enjoyed the experience. So it's getting a bit gloomy out here. So let's get back to the studio. Let's find out if the flight vectives have convinced me that I need carbon plates in my trail running shoes. But let's also find out if it's worth its quite hefty price tag of 180 pounds. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope you are all fit and well out there and getting excited about Christmas just around the corner. I also hope that you've all entered our giveaway extravaganza. Don't worry, if you haven't, you've still got time. So what I've done is I've left a link in the description for the giveaway video. Go along, check it out and get yourself entered. There are some amazing prizes up for grabs. But anyway, back to today's video. And yep, we are taking a full in-depth look at the North Face Flight Vectives, one of the first trail running shoes on the market to have a carbon plated midsole. Now, a quick funny story. Well, it's not actually that funny, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. Uh, we were out in Chamonix for UTMB this year. Myself and Liga are out in town doing a bit of retail therapy. We walked into the North Face shop just to have a look around. Uh, we got chatting to this really nice guy inside and it turned out that he was the manager of the store. We had a long chat about running shoes, running shoe technology and UTMB. And it turns out that he'd been following and watching our shoe reviews here at the channel. And he'd seen my review of the North Face Vective Infinite, the non-carbon plated version of the shoe in the range and he knew I wasn't fully convinced about carbon plates in trail shoes so he was convinced that I would enjoy the running experience in the flight Vective so we were lucky enough he hooked us up with this pair so I could test it out and review it on the channel anyway that's enough of me going on let's dive in and give you a few facts and figures about this high-end performance trail running shoe it retails in the UK for 180 pounds weight wise it comes in at 295 grams in a men's UK 9 and 245 grams in a women's shoe it runs off a 6 mil heel offset and it's available in four or five different colorways for men and for women. When it comes down to sizing, yep, you heard me right, this is a UK nine and it fits just right. So I would say the shoe sizes up quite long because I haven't run any UK nine for years and it's got average width in the toe box. Right, so let's break down the construction and we're gonna start with the upper first. The North Face have decided to go with a booty design. So we've got no traditional tongue in that upper. We've just got this elasticated midfoot for a nice precise fit and hold and good levels of lockdown. Materials used, we've got that matrix fabric again. A lot of trail running brands are using that in their shoes at the moment. And that's a combination of durable Kevlar threads and polyamide yarn. So that's gonna give you good levels of flexible support around the midfoot, high levels of breathability, but it's also extremely durable. We've got a 3D molded heel counter for that locked in feel. We've got some overlays around the lace eyelets, working our way around the toe box for a bit of extra durability. A little bit of reinforcement in that toe, but it's still pretty soft to be honest. And then the upper's finished off with some nice sort of high vis detailing for safer nighttime running. Moving down to the midsole, and like a lot of running shoes these days, we've got quite an aggressive aggressive rocket geometry. That's engineered for long lasting forward propulsion and efficiency over distance. We've got two different types of compound used in the midsole, so it's dual density. That's to give you a nice lightweight feel, but also to offer high levels of energy return. And obviously we got a carbon plate worked into the construction as well. And that's there for multi-directional stability, propulsion, but also as a bit of underfoot protection. So it kind of works as a rock plate. Finishing off the construction, one of the most important parts of our trail running shoes, the outsole. The Flight Vective has a 3.5 mil lug depth, so 
flow, enabling you to cross over to lots of different types of terrain. And those lugs have been clad in the Sureface CTRL sticky rubber compound, giving you good levels of grip on a big mix of underfoot conditions. Right, so there you go, a few facts and figures, a little bit of information about the construction, but let's dive in and go into how we feel the shoe is performing when it comes to fit, comfort, cushioning, the all important topic of grip and traction out on the trails. And we'll also see and highlight if there's anything we feel that could be improved. Having tested and reviewed the Vective Infinite on the channel, uh, both shoes actually do feel and run very similar, especially in the midsole. I would say the biggest difference I noticed was that upper design. Having this booty construction compared to the more traditional upper fit of the Vective Infinite, uh, I just felt it, it hugged my foot a bit better. I felt a bit more connected to the upper. Most importantly, it just felt a little bit more comfortable to run in. Uh, also, you get a slight weight reduction uh, in the Vective Infinite. It's only slight, but I definitely picked up on that when I was out on the trails. The midsoles performed really well. I was a big fan of this rocker geometry the North Face used when I tested out the Infinite, and I am still a big fan of it now. When it comes down to midsole cushioning, I couldn't really tell the difference between the two shoes. They both feel very similar to me. So offering a nice plushness underfoot but you still feel really connected to the trails don't get me wrong they're not like a deeply cushioned trail running shoe like a hoka speedgo or an endorphin trail but they still offer a nice comfortable ride with that compound in the midsole the rocket geometry and that carbon plate the shoe does feel very efficient when you pick up a, a longer firmer stretch of trail or even tarmac speaking of the plate in the midsole and if i'm honest i didn't really notice a lot of difference between the carbon plate in the flight vective and the TPU plate in the Infinites. And I personally think that's a good thing. I was expecting this shoe to be quite stiff and pretty rigid through the midfoot. And there's actually a lot more give in that midsole than I thought. And definitely a lot more give than some of the carbon plated shoes I've run in in the past. I also think because that plate is carbon, it offers a little bit more underfoot protection from Sharp Rocks Trail Debris when you compare it to the TPU plate in the Vective Infinite. So lots of good things to report about the flight Vectives, but like when we reviewed the Infinites, there is a few issues that we've been having. Number one has to be traction on that outsole, or should I say lack of traction on that outsole. We're rapidly moving into those wet muddy boggy months here in the UK out on the trails and having a quite shallow 3.5 mil lug on this outsole this shoe really does struggle in those conditions this sure face rubber compound is really sticky so again it's great on rocky areas or wet rocky areas but if you hit uh, a muddy section especially if it's off camber you really do struggle to get grip and traction in the shoe I personally think that it's screaming out for a 5 mil lug uh, it's going to make the shoe so much more versatile still going to be fine in those drier harder summer months still going to be able to cross over to a bit of tarmac now and again but when you hit those muddy sections of trail a five mil lug is going to give you way more grip way more traction and you're going to feel so much more confident in your footing i've heard rumors and seen some pictures of a deeper lugged soft ground version of this shoe so i'm sure we'll see that sometime in the near future the only other thing i will say is with the all singing all dancing flight vective retail for £180 when you compare it to the Vective Infinite's £145, I don't know whether the performance of this shoe is £35 better than this one. Yes, the upper does fit the foot a bit better. Um, it maybe runs a little bit more comfortable, but I was still a fan of that upper on the Infinite's. Um, they both utilise that matrix fabric and in fact, the Infinites have got more matrix fabric in that upper and it is a cheaper price point shoe. When it comes down to midsole performance, cushioning, comfort propulsion, I couldn't really feel a lot of difference between the two. I suppose with there being a carbon plate in this, it maybe gave me a little bit more propulsion, a little bit more efficiency, but it is very, very slight. So there you have it guys, the ups and downs of running in the North Face's Flight Vective trail running shoe. But we've reached that time when we need to get some points on the Run for Adventure board, and we always start with price point first. At 180 pounds for this trail running shoe, it really does put it up the top end when you compare it to all the other trail running shoes that are available nowadays. I'm not fully convinced um, on performance that that price point is justified, especially when you compare it to its slightly more affordable brother. So because of that, 
We can't score this shoe high. It's a trail running shoe and it is 180 pounds. So we're gonna give it a four out of 10 when it comes to price. Moving on to comfort and performance and very similar to when we tested the Vective Infinite. I've really enjoyed my time in the shoe and how it's performed out on the trails. For me, one of the standout features has to be this booty construction on the upper. Definitely preferred that compared to the other shoe that I've tested. You feel really locked in, really dialed into that midfoot, really well held in the heel. And I just felt really connected to the upper of the shoe. As far as the rocket geometry, I think the North Face have nailed that across the Vective range. So just feels really, really efficient, especially when you pick up those firmer, drier sections of trail. The only thing, again, that lets it down is the lug depth on the outsole, very similar to the Vective Infinite. Three and a half mil lug. I personally think the shoe is really set up for those sort of spring, summer, autumn months when it's a lot drier and firmer here in the UK. And it does struggle uh, on those muddier winter runs. And also, I still think I preferred the P-Bax base plate in the Vective Infinite. Um, yes, it's not super stiff for a carbon plate, but you can still feel that rigidity. And I'm not fully convinced that we need carbon plates in our trail shoes. So taking all that into consideration, we're gonna score the Flight Vectives an eight out of 10 for comfort and performance. Last up is durability, an area that we always like to see scoring high here at Run For Adventure. And so far, so good. The Flight Vectives look to be holding up really well, like the Vective Infinite did. Obviously, the North Face are using this matrix fabric in the upper construction. That is all about being super durable and holding up to the sort of wear and tear that we put our poor trail running shoes through, especially here in a British winter. But yeah, so far, so good. Obviously, very hard to score a shoe after that kind of mileage when it comes to durability. So I'm sure there's lots of viewers out there that have clocked up hundreds and hundreds of miles in the flight vective. So it'd be great to hear back from you guys. How's the shoe holding up? Has it been durable? or are you struggling? So get in the comments and let us know. The one thing I would say, black and white colorway for a trail running shoe, maybe not the most sensible option. Yes, it looks super cool when you launch the product and all your pro runners are running around in it, great, but um, come to a British muddy winter and this is how it ends up looking after about 35 miles. So it's pretty grubby already, it doesn't look so brilliant white anymore. One of the main reasons that I bought the Vective Infinites in the first place, because it's a much darker colorway and it will hold up to them muddy runs and look better for longer. But altogether, um, the shoe looks to be holding up really well. So we're gonna give it a pretty solid eight out of 10 when it comes to durability. So tallying all those points up, a run for adventure, the flight Vective from the North Face is gonna score a pretty hefty price tag, but a fun shoe to run in, 20 out of 30. When it comes down to colorway, and we know this is super subjective, but we like to give our opinion on it anyway. And I really like the look of the flight Vectives black and white, super bold color combination for a trail running shoe, and it will really stand out in a busy marketplace. But when it comes to trail running shoes in the UK, it's about as useful as a chocolate teapot. So like I say, it's not white anymore. It's kind of this muddy beige color and it doesn't look that attractive. So unfortunately, we are gonna give it a thumbs down for looks at Run For Adventure, just because it's so unpractical. When it comes down to comparisons, I suppose the best thing to compare them to is the rest of the Vective range. So there's three shoes within that range. You've got the entry level Endurus, then you've got the mid range Infinites that we've tested and reviewed, and obviously the range is topped out with the flight Vectives. Very similar uppers on all three shoes. We've got that same midsole rocker geometry and the same lug pattern on the outsole. But time to wrap up with a quick conclusion. And I have enjoyed the miles I've put into the flight Vectives. Uh, I, I think that change of upper with the booty construction definitely gives you a better lockdown and fit. And it does feel a little bit more comfortable. But I suppose the question is, is has running in the flight Vectives convinced me that I need carbon plates in the midsole of my trail shoes? And a very simple answer to that question is no, not really. Um, I don't think I need carbon plates in the midsole of my trail shoes. The only time I did feel a little bit of benefit was when I picked up those firmer, drier sections of trail or I hit the tarmac. On the tarmac, 
I definitely noticed a bit of difference from that carbon plate. And I think it did give me a little bit of propulsion, but on all the other stuff, I didn't really notice it there. What I will say is this is obviously the launch colorway, the black and white. And like I said, there has been a recent color update. So you can pick these up for around about 140 pounds now, which if you're really desperate to try out a carbon plated go faster trail shoe, then that's not a bad price to pay. So um, what I've done is I've left a link in the description if you want to find out any more info on the shoe. As always, we'd be great to get your feedback on the shoe. So if you've been running in it, let us know all about it. And don't forget, we've got a couple of really good giveaways going at the moment. So we've got one running for the Nightcore UT27 head torch. Big fan of that head torch, but we've also got Run for Adventures giveaway extravaganza. You've got until the 23rd of December to get entered, guys. So don't miss out. There's some incredible prizes up for grabs. I've left a link in the description to both videos. So go along and watch. And like I said, get yourselves entered. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. <laughs>